All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Close and Conquer. I have probably, well, I'm the most excited, David, of, of any of the podcasts I've done because it's you. And I'm going to be honest with you because we just come off of you speaking to 5,000 plus people. And the reality is what I want to get right into uh, this podcast. The reason I decided to start doing it a year ago is purely that I saw all these people struggling in their business world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I didn't have any experience. You know, my mom didn't have any experience. We had no money. And I saw a lot of people making money, and I saw a lot of people not believing in themselves. Right. And I've not met anybody. I said this out on stage that I'm actually I almost I almost felt like if I was you recruiting me, I was going to start all over again. I'm like I already work here. I'm going to get excited. Like <laughs> I'm going to start all over again. I work here, and right. I want to get right into um, some of the things you talked about because mm -hmm. the majority of the people that are that are downloading this and listening to this are are looking for help in their business mm -hmm. in life in general. And all the advice you're given has been very specific, but like it can help you in every in every capacity. Right. You talked a lot about mindset and you talked mm -hmm. a lot about, you know, what it feels like to fail, mm -hmm. how you got to fail your way ahead. And the reality is that take any industry, real estate, life insurance, any sales position, mm -hmm. there are a million, two million people doing it. And there's 27 million people that have quit. Right. How, how, how have you been able to, to teach people? Cause hell, I don't think you, I mean, I read your book, right? Which is when I see you and I read the book, I'm like, I know he's not lying, but damn, I can't. It's hard to picture. I can't picture it. No, yeah. I can't actually do it. Yep. Like, I know you're not lying, but I'm like, I just, even when I was reading, I was like, dude. And then when I met you, I was, I kept losing my mind. Like, I know he's telling the truth. What did you do over those years to develop? Mm -hmm. And they ain't got to be you. They ain't got to right. run 250 miles. Right. They, 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 they don't have to, you know, come off knee surgery 13 weeks later and do like you talked about doing something 440 miles. I'm like, do I get tired of driving my car 440 miles? Right. And I'm, I ain't lying to you. Like, I'm not going to, I, I want to be the best I can be at what I'm doing. Right? right. What, what can you talk to us about that can make them? And I love when you keep saying bad motherfucker, cause they can be a bad motherfucker for the family right? in their life as a coach, as a parent, right. as whatever it is, as a leader in business, as an employee. Mm hmm Please talk to us about that because you breathe a ton of life into me. So one big thing is a lot of people, it's, it's hard to, to imagine, but you have to learn how to fail. Because I'm going to explain this to you. I had big dreams. A lot of us have big dreams, big goals. And when you have goals that are maybe outside your reach, you have to know that getting to that goal, you're going to have a lot of bad days. A lot of setbacks. So like when I was losing 106 pounds in three months, the first two months or the first two weeks, it's like I was gaining weight. You know, I would lose a pound, gain two. So I was just failing. I kept failing and kept failing and kept failing. So I had to teach myself how to fail right. And what that means is when I fail, I can't spend much time in that fail zone. I have to be able to get up and get after the next day just as fast because my goals were just, you know, to be a Navy SEAL. I don't have time to stay here and feel bad for myself for weeks and months and years because I'll lose that time. So the big thing is know that if you have big goals and big dreams, along the way, failure is going to happen. So how fast do you get up from that? And you got to teach yourself that. But the biggest key to success in anything you do is you got to have an unlimited supply of fucking fuck you. This drive and passion, and it, and it may come from nothing. Like, for me, there was no passion, no drive, no nothing. But I had this fire that I'm going to be somebody. And it has to be there because on all those bad days and all those days you don't want to do shit, you have to be your own motivator, your own coach, your own, your own trainer, your own everything. So to do that, you have to come into work, and work is whatever your work may be, ready to go. And what that means is you may have failed miserably yesterday, but you come to work like, people are like, man, you just lost everything. How the hell are you just fucking damn motivated? Because mm -hmm. this is what it takes. This is what the fuck it takes. And you got to get it from wherever you can. Whether you make up this illusion of your life or this false reality that gets you motivated, whatever gets you motivated, it's got to be here at the tip of your brain at all times. Because in those dark moments, you got you, you to gotta pull it out. So that's the big thing for me, man. I was always fired up at all times. 
you said a couple times. As a matter of fact, you said when you met Pastor Matthew, I love what you said. I was mm -hmm. listening, and he said, you see, he said, man, we work on him and give him a year. You yeah. said, fucking year's real. Yep. Like a year's real. He yep. was talking about substance abuse treatment and getting people in and helping them out. Please just tell everybody what you were saying. Because I'm sitting there going yeah. like, damn, that's deep. And it's so, and then he's bobbing his head up and down. Mm -hmm. And I heard you talk about that. You leave a meeting, yep. three, four months, like you're, 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 and then it just, Boom, it comes crashing down. It goes away. What did you mean when you talk about like a year is real? So he was talking about there's people in these different, uh, I guess, programs yep. that yep. do it for 30 days. Correct. And there's a lot of programs that have, are 30 days. Mm -hmm. And 30 day programs are good, but it's kind of a hack. Because while they say it takes three weeks to develop a habit or some, it's always this hacky shit. Whatever it is, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, 30 days ain't going to do shit for you. The permanent, you want to make it permanent. Permanent, you start talking about a year, 18 months, two years, that's a sacrifice. And when you commit yourself to something for a year, you're not going to say, oh, I'm going to let that go. Because in your mind, you, like, I mean, you, you have it clear as day. That year took a lot out of me. That year built me. That year started to scrape away all that scar tissue, started to clean me up. 30 days doesn't clean shit up. 30 days just kind of covers up, put a blanket over it. It's like, it's like putting a rug over it. A year, it cleans you up nicely, man. Whatever your problem is, if, if you can dedicate yourself for a year to something, you could be a changed person. You know what's funny? You said that, and I didn't thought about it. I, mean, I was sharing, I've been and I share, I've always shared about being sober because when I got sober, mm -hmm. this dude had been sober only 15 years. I didn't do a program, but he would have been the closest thing to a mentor. Mm -hmm. And he said, tell everybody, peer pressure is powerful. Yep. Like, let them know. That's what we do. Any, any company, this company, people have been like, you want to drink? I said, if I start drinking, quit. Seriously, mm -hmm. I will not lead you. Yep. You will not want to, you might follow me. To, mm -hmm. It'll be a path of destruction. You need to quit, yep. right? And you coach a lot of people. Mm -hmm. People reach out to you. What is the first thing you're trying to figure out about them? Is there five things, ten? When you start, because obviously you're, you start getting in, in yep. their head, and, and start, what are you trying to figure out when they reach out and you decide to take that on? So I used to coach a lot of people. I don't coach anybody now. Got it, but you used to coach I them. used to coach them. Okay. So what it was, my first question was, okay, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to forego? Because a lot of people, like this guy came in one time, I was a, a trainer, and he goes, man, I can stop doing anything but my frappuccinos. I go fucking leave. Because I'm looking for that person like me. People, people, it's hard for people to understand how I lost 106 pounds in less than three months. I sat down at the table and I said to myself, what are you willing to give up? Everything. And when people come to me with that kind of mindset, I can work with you. When you are willing to strip yourself down to nothing and give everything, that's who I want to work with. Because now I can mold you into exactly who you want to be. When you put these restrictions up, and that's why, that's why my first question is, how bad do you want this? If it's as bad as you want to live or breathe or sleep, whatever the hell it may be, I can work with you. But a lot of people most people don't want it that badly, which is why they always ask the question, man, how did you get to where you are? You know how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know exactly how to be you or how to be me. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it. So I can't make you do it, and nor do I have the time or energy to force you into that place that I know you have to be to do it. Mm -hmm. There's no luck in this game, man. It may be a little bit of luck, but the luck happens after you bust your ass. And you put yourself in that lucky situation. Luck doesn't happen. You put yourself in that situation where luck might fucking happen. And that's what people don't know. But to get there, luck ain't going to happen. You have to put yourself in that situation, man. It takes a lot of work. So I was thinking about this as I was reading your book. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, you go play in the NFL, do you need talent? I mean, mm -hmm. you can have the greatest mindset in the history of the world, mm -hmm. you know, like, and I'm not saying that, you know, attitude over talent. I get all that, yep. but it, I've seen some pretty, pretty fucked up attitudes, for professional athletes who still, they're just really talented, dude, yep. because it requires talent. What you do is, you know, you said, I'm not superhuman. It's not supernatural. 
Do you think, so I'm just curious, now, it's tr straight curiosity. Yep. Do you think that anybody, because the stuff you do when you talk about it, mm -hmm. biking across the country, mm -hmm. not across your town right. or your state, running that many miles, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily require athletic talent. Like, you don't have no. to be born, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you think that anybody, that, and it's and not about when they finish. They don't need to finish second or 20th. or the, right. Do you think anybody that put their mind to it mm -hmm. and did the training and gave up everything mm -hmm. could do some of those races? Yes. You do? But... They cannot do it with my body. Got it. Explain that. If you're healthy, I've never been healthy. Like, people think that the races I did in the military broke me. I was broken way before then. Numerous health problems before I even got in the military. Really? Numerous. I'm talking about, like, you know, you're talking about, like, sickle cell. Yeah, I remember that. Twisted body from all the stress I was under as a kid. Yeah. Different. There's a lot of different problems. Thyroid issue, adrenal issues, all kind of shit. That you had when you were young? Yes. Okay. And so then they got magnified as they got older. So I would go to the start line of a race, like Badwater, the 135-mile race to Death Valley. Yeah. No one knows this. But if you go back, and there's videos of me out there, Google David Goggins' first video or, or first uh, Badwater race, you will see black compression tape on my ankles. I had broken feet at the start line of a 135-mile race. How Your I feet were broken. Broken. And if you go back, you will see as I'm finishing the race, you will see this black compression tape floating behind me. I went to the start line of that race. I trained for that race with broken fucking feet. And I don't talk about a lot because what happens is, Normal people with normal minds can't understand that. So then you become a liar or this and that. But now I got to the point in my life where I'm like, you can go fuck yourself, dude. If you don't believe it, go ahead. But I don't talk about a lot because I, I know what I've done and I know what the mind can do and where it can take you. I've experienced it over and over. And my mom has seen it. Over and over and over again to the point where it's almost like I can't even believe sometimes, but I'm willing to go there. I want to push myself to that limit and see what happens. But you think health people that don't have any health problems, mm -hmm. you think that they could go yes. do these deals? I think, yes, 100%. Really? 100%. Because the majority of people think there's no way they could ever do it. And that's the reason why they can't do it. There you go. That's the only reason they have already put their cap on their success in life. And that's why most people aren't sitting where you're sitting or sitting where I'm sitting. You never capped yourself. You might have. And if you did, you took it off. 100%. People cap themselves. They look at somebody and because their mind can't imagine it, they then start talking shit. This, he has to be doing this or he has to be doing that. There has to be some trick. There has to be some potion. This is bullshit. No, it's because you cannot allow your mind to open up for the possibility of it can be done which is why you you being people yeah. are where they are today because yeah. you have not you shackled your mind to have limits and everybody has a limit mm -hmm. but find it first you got a limit i haven't found it yet i don't think you have I haven't found it yet it's pretty crazy it's crazy i, think I haven't you found will. it yet I find it at times, but what happens is I then figure out how to get around it, through it, above it, climb over it. So those limits, um, I'm always, that's what I said, I taught myself how to fail. I'm always skirting on that like limit of like, okay, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. Okay, I failed, but I was right there. What did I miss? What the fuck did I miss? Oh, that's what I fucking missed. And then it happens. So. so you made a comment. I was reading a post, and I shared it with about everybody because mm -hmm. I was like, and I didn't realize the numbers, but share for everybody that may not have seen it. How many people you said actually are online mm -hmm. that are not following you, watching your shit? 23 million. 23 million human beings. 23 million non-followers 
who will not follow you. I have my phone right now. I pulled up. Who are not following you to like, hey, I'm checking out. Nope. They just want to watch it because they're so broken and so negative yep. that they want to see what you're doing and pop off of the mouth about it. That's right. They don't want to follow me because yeah. then that shows weakness on their part. But they'll watch your but shit. But they'll watch my shit. If they watch my shit, they'll gain something from it because that's why you're watching me. Yeah. Think about it, man. So, see, people, like you're talking about that, you know, during the speech, <clears throat> people get hurt by these people. I love them. You're, you're telling me every day, because I used to be a weak motherfucker too. Yeah. You're showing me every day who you are. You're 23 million people. You're watching me, but you don't want to admit you're watching me. This is great. I know exactly who you are. So while they want to come on, some of them want to come on and offend me, but you got to see what's up with Goggins. You got to see what's up with him. You must see TV. So, 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 so you got to watch it. So that's amazing. I don't even know who the fuck you are. Never will. Never will. Because you haven't done enough for me to take notice. Right. But you know who the fuck I am. So this, that alone gives me a lot of power every day. But that's what people got to understand. These haters, they know who you are. But you don't know them. There's a reason behind that. You've done something amazing. Mm -hmm. They've done nothing. Correct. Period. Which is probably why they fucking hate your ass. Why they talk shit. That's right. And, and you know, it's funny because somebody, had, I was looking at something one day. And first of all, there's nothing funny about being in bad health. Mm -mm. There's nothing funny about being overweight. Nope. There's nothing funny about feeling like shit when you take your shirt off and you're a dude. Yep. There's nothing funny about taking your shirt off and going like, I don't like this. Yep. Like, I don't, there's nothing funny about being in a pool with your shirt on. Yep. Because you're fat. Yep. I mean, that's why you're doing it. You're not doing it because it feels good. It's right. wet. Your shirt's on. Hell, you're a Navy SEAL. Would you rather have your shirt on or off? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. right? But, and I'll see these people and they'll go on and they'll make these videos. Mm -hmm. Right? I wanted to, because I always wonder how you felt. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's a big fat dude with his shirt off. Mm -hmm. And he's running, ah, you know, get out. And he's doing his thing. And he don't, he's not talking shit, by the way. He right. don't mean no harm. Right. When you see, uh, if you ever see him, I don't know if you ever see him or not. I've been, I've been, people have shown me him a lot. How do you a feel about people. those? I'm more just because I'm just morbidly curious. I feel bad for him. Yeah. Um, not because uh, for a lot of reasons. First of all, if maybe you took your life more serious, yeah. lose some fucking weight versus trying to imitate David Goggins. Yeah. First thing, but second thing is, where are you going? <laughs> what do you want to do with your life, bro? Like you're, you saw David Goggins, and because now you want some followers, I'm going to imitate David Goggins, and I'm going to be a fat. Big old fat white dude That's right. that runs and sp spills a bunch of shit. While it may be funny, where the fuck are you going? Correct. You, you, you look like late 20s, early 30s? Yeah. Where the fuck are you going, bro? Not very long or like, far. Life right now needs to really be kicking you in the back of the head saying, look, man, our time frame is done. Because what people don't get about life is up until you're about 30, you're fucked. You know what you're doing. You're kind of just scrambling around mm -hmm. unless you have good direction. Then you might figure it out from 30 to 50-something, maybe 60, and then you, the back half of your life, you're fucked. So two-thirds of your fucking life, you suck. <laughs> so the more you fuck up that middle part mm. from 30 to 50, 40 to 60-ish, ish, mm -hmm. you only got about a good 25 years of like, man, I'm, I'm killing it out here. People don't get that. So you're fucking around out here, running around your shirt off, and you're in that you're in that window now of like, you're starting to waste time, bro. You're starting to waste time. So th that's how I feel about it. Well, I think also what's what's sad for me, and I've said this, you know, we do this no matter what you do in business, right? Like I was broke as shit, everybody's fine. Like when I got sober, everybody's like, man, you didn't hang, you know, you don't hang out with us anymore. I'm like, dude, I have no problem hanging out with you fools, but you somehow think I'm judging you. I don't give a shit if you go get high and get drunk mm -hmm. in my life. Right. I still go to things too because I'm sober. I don't say a word. I ain't preaching to you. I ain't, it's your business. I wasn't trying to help. Honestly, I was selfishly trying to help me. Right. You talk about a year, dude. After 30 days, it took me a year to sleep. Right. Like to actually go to sleep because when you go to sleep fucked up every night, mm -hmm. that's how you get to sleep. And I did every night, seven days a week, every month for a year since the age of probably 13 and a half. Jesus. Literally. Okay. So it did. And how many times did I think about drinking and getting high again? Every yep. fucking day. Yep. When did that thought go away? Probably at two years in. Mm -hmm. Year I could start to sleep, but the people around me, and then I was broke, but sober. Mm -hmm. 
You talk about your 30s, it's crazy, because I'm like, I got into my 30s, mm -hmm. got sober right around 29, yep. got in there, started to figure some shit out. Yep. Now I'm 51, mm -hmm. and you're starting to figure it out in a different way, like you've accomplished this, what's my next deal? Yep. You know? For those people that are out there, in whatever window they're in right now, I think they're, they're so crippled by what they confront, right? Because mm -hmm. people get to them. It doesn't seem like anybody gets to you, but it, but you have confronted some things at times, mm -hmm. like online, which I, and I've, I've been, I don't follow shit, but I've been mm -hmm. following you for a while. That's why I know all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Not because I thought you were going to speak with us, speak to us one day. I just have been. And there was a guy, some dude, military guy popping off about you and you mm -hmm. took it on head. I watched that whole thing, dude, that mm -hmm. video like three times, mm -hmm. but I always want to know, like he took the shit head on chips and caviar podcast. Yes. Yep. Why'd you choose? Because, and you, and I mean, you smoked it. Oh, yeah. Yo, yeah. I brought receipts. You sure the fuck did. I brought receipts. And it stopped. Oh, yeah. Why did you decide that? What was it about that when you're like, man, I, 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 I'm dealing with this one? So, this is what it is, man. Like, my military career was everything for me. Yeah. And I won't go too deep into it. Yeah. But when you are trying to take away something that I worked so hard for, because you have a thing against me. And a lot of people who are jealous, I'm a man. Mm -hmm. So I offend a lot of other so-called men mm -hmm. just to cut to the fucking chase. Understood. All right? Yep. It took a lot for me to be a man. Mm -hmm. It ain't fucking easy. Nope. It's the nope. hardest thing a man, a, a person can ever Probably fucking right. do in the world is be a man, real mm -hmm. dude. From working out to eating to family to fucking doing all the shitty fucking shit, mm -hmm. you ain't happy a lot. Correct. A lot. So, True. so all this fucking shit that people want to talk about, oh man, I ain't happy a lot. Mm -hmm. All right? I ain't supposed to be. So, when you live that way and people know you ain't fucking lying and they saw all the work you put in, it makes a motherfucker feel alpha. It makes the alpha feel a little bit weird around you. So after a while, when you exceed the standards of the military, exceed the standards of Navy SEALs, and you're constantly going to this direction, you're some fat, dumb black dude that couldn't swim. Mm -hmm. Now you exceed the standard? It starts to rub some people the wrong way. And I would tell people about it. Not like talking shit to them, but we got to be better. Like, like I talked to that ranger back there. Yep, sure did. It's who the fuck we are, man. That's, That's what right. we got to do. So when you try to take that from me, I'm going to, I'm not, I don't care who likes me. I'm going to attack you head on. You're going to see my face. I'm not going to cower. I'm going to call you the fuck out. I'm going to bring my shit because I earned that. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing as a man, that's what sucks as a man. You know how nervous sure that enough. was for me to sit back and know I'm going to possibly have a whole fucking community coming at me. Think about it. I'm one dude. Yeah. And I'm attacking a whole bunch of motherfuckers. No, no. That's why it's easier just to shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Just quietly go away. I sat back for months and said, man, I got to fucking do this. And, I'm, and I went through everything. I know this is going to come with it. This is going to come with it. This is going to come with it. But I'll be able to fucking sleep at night as a man. Mm -hmm. And that's what came of that. You know, he, he ran his mouth. He lied. Yeah. And I said, well... I guess I gotta do this now. It's time. It's time. So that's what it was for me, man. Be, be, you know, you know, being a man sucks. Yeah. Being a man sucks. I would agree. Being a man. Yep. Being Not a real to no. Be one. Being a man sucks, and that was and that was a man decision for me at that time. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and if you were an alpha, what you were threatened by? That's it. You're not. That's you it. want other dudes to crush it too. You want them to raise the bar. That's you it. You want to feel challenged. You want to feel uncomfortable. And that's the one thing I'll say right now that people listen to this. A real person. A real alpha, a real go-getter, they ain't saying shit about nobody. Correct. That's why you will never, ever hear me dropping somebody's name, running my mouth about somebody. I don't know what you went through. I don't know what you're going through. I didn't wear the shoes you wore when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in your fucked up house. I didn't have your fucked up family. I don't know shit about you. So guess what I do? Shut the fuck up. Because real men don't say shit. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, we're too busy trying to grind and be better. Correct. Second of all, unless we know what we know what we know, we shut our fucking mouths. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, there's not many real men who, who live by that creed of like, 
You know, if you're on social media running your fucking mouth and shit, mm -hmm. you're just a bitch. Correct. You're, you're honestly, and that, that's right. not me trying to be no. some after school special shit. Mm -mm. You really are a bitch. Mm -hmm. Real men ain't doing it. Real men don't care about that gossipy bullshit. Mm -mm. Get to work, man. Correct. That's it. Plus, it's shit they would never in a million years say to your face. No. Never. No. Not in Matter of fact, this dude, years. I showed the text messages. He was trying to no, get me to work for him. Because <laughs> So that's, that's what, how it all started. Yeah. I mean, it was, I, I know people too well. Mm -hmm. that, that's the thing about it, man. I know why you're a bitch. Yeah. I know why. Because I was once you. Yeah. Takes a lot to be a man. Hundred percent, and I and I and and I, I want to talk about that and close out because you're right. And I, I'm sitting here thinking, it does suck. Yes. You know, my daughter's here. Somebody asked me the other day about balance. I said, balance. Do we're broke as shit? Mm -hmm. My 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 ex-wife. I got a I got a daughter. Her 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 mother dies seven days after my son's born. Very close to her mother. Extremely close. Like. Talked to her three, four times a day. Good for her. She mm -hmm. dies instantly, suddenly. My son, can't. she can't breastfeed because she's a wreck. He don't take no formula. We're getting this Alimentum formula. It's 40 bucks a can from mm -hmm. Stop and Shop in Connecticut. Two, day, two a day, this horse eats. 80 bucks a day. And I ain't got no money. Yep. And I'm sitting in Stop and Shop, no bullshit. And I'm thinking, I'm going to start stealing the formula. Yep. Stop and Shop got money. Probably ain't going to look for the formula. Exactly. It ain't tagged. Yep. And I'm going to steal it. And for me, that was the point in my life where I'm like, dude, who the fuck am I? Mm -hmm. Like, I have two children I chose to have. Mm -hmm. I know how I was raised. What am I doing? Like, I'd gotten sober. Congratulations. Right. But I was broke. Broken. Broke. Yep. And it was for me that moment in time where I was like, dude, no matter what else I do in life, you talked about your milk, no matter what else I do in life, I'm going to be a great father. Yep. No matter what else I do, I'm going to provide. I ain't never going to worry about money. It doesn't mean I'm going to go ahead and buy a penthouse in every city in the country, right. but I'm never going to put myself or my kids in a position. And that was my goal, right? To your point, your yep. goal. Like, that was my everything in the world to me. Yep. For the people that, and you're taught, you, you taught great about it, because it's like, dude, for most of the folks, listen, they don't have a military career, let alone yours. Right. You know, my, my father was in the Navy. I wasn't close to him. It was a really, really, really interesting fucking ride growing up. So I loved your book. Because mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. The book made me cry right? because I, you start to remember. Yep. You start to remember. Then when you start to remember your mom. Yep. And, and, and you know, I remember when my mom got remarried again, and it's like just same thing. You know, it's like, and then how I felt about myself, mm -hmm. not being able to stand. Like, that's why your book shook me. If you haven't read Can't Hurt Me, you should read it. It's, it's, it's the best book I've read. Appreciate For it. For real. It is. It's, it, it, you know, it'll, it'll, make, it'll change your life. So... For, for the people, for all of us, right, your family's what you got, mm -hmm. whoever, that per, whoever those people are. Right. And you, you decided to stand up, because if he had said something stupid about a race or yeah. an ankle. Don't care about that shit. shit. Who nope. gives a fuck? But, hey, I, this is what I poured into. Mm -hmm. You know? My, 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 when, I, when I got done with high school, I was like, I'm, I'm going go to I go to Armory, I take my ass out, I do my test, I'm, like, I'm going to go to Marines. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. 17, graduate high school, my mom said, you're going to go to college. I was like, why? And she equated that all the people she knew that went to the military. Right. Family, that they were, you know, I was going to come out and be just, and I was like, right. I don't know how that makes any sense. Right. But, you know, I went to college, whatever. Did my deal, played baseball, the whole thing. Never went. Um, so I have the utmost respect for what y'all have done. But I want to close with this. What hurts me the most, like that room tonight, mm -hmm. there's dudes not doing that for their family. No. They're not. And I, I think they want to. I don't think they don't want to. I don't think right. they wake up and go, you know what? I love fucking not providing for my family. Right. I love not protecting my family. They want to. Right. And most of the people listening are they're dudes, right? Right. And working fucking 18 hours a day sucks. Yep. Being a provider and a protector and not asking anybody to care for you because it's not their job sucks. Because yep. it's not their job. Yep. It's nobody's job to take care of me. That's right. It's my job to take care of y'all, and whatever's left, I'll figure it out. I got enough to take care of me. We're good. See you tomorrow. You said it. That's my job. Yep. How do we, like, parting, whatever you want to say, David, don't matter to me, you'll kill it. You've been unfucking believable This podcast changed my life. You talk and changed my life. Mm -hmm. And it's made me think a lot more about things. So mm -hmm. for that, I appreciate you, and appreciate I thank that. you. And I mean it. What would you like to say on our way out here about 
whatever it is, your, your, your family, your focus, your goal, and just honestly, man in the fuck up. You know what? It, it comes down to this for me. How do I want to be remembered? And that's the problem, man. Like nowadays, people don't give a fuck how they're remembered. They don't give a fuck about their family. Everybody's equal. Their mom is equal to them. Their dad's equal to them. They're growing. Everybody's fucking equal. So it's a tough question to ask because when I grew up, my mom worked three fucking jobs. So mine, yep. And all I wanted to do, and she got her fucking ass damn near murdered. And it took her down a dark hole. And I saw this. It helps, that helped me grow up to say, all I want to do is retire my mother when I get older. That's all I wanted to fucking do. And thank God I did that. But the thing about it, with a lot of people, they don't have that in them. The parents raise the kids very differently now, so the kids don't have that sense of self. And I believe in self-discipline, self-pride, self-motivation. No one has that self anymore. That self is gone. So that driving force that tells you, I have to do this shit, I took great pride in the fact that I was nobody. And what you just described put goosebumps on me because that's exactly what I took pride in, was I'm going to make sure you're good and you're good. My mom would tell you right now, she's right there sitting. Yes, she is. She knows I don't buy myself shit. I take great pride in that. I don't want shit because how I'm wired I'm wired to, hey, mom, I'm going to get you this, 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 and this. My girl, everybody's got everything. I don't even own a fucking car. And I'm a multimillionaire. And I say that with pride. Yeah. Because what I was here to do as a man, and men may not even want to hear this. It sounds so barbaric. That's the pride in what you have as a man is that you see your mom, you see your girl, you see your kids, you see all this shit, you see them doing well. That's all a real man wants. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about how they dress, how they look, mm -hmm. what they're driving. They don't give a shit. Because why? Your trophies are your family and they're all walking around. Every man that sees you, they, they see you walking in with some sweatpants and shit, but they know your family's fucking balling. Right. Because you put the fucking time in, you put the effort in, you put the work in. And as a man, we don't want none of that shit. We just want fucking respect. Amen. And that's what men don't give a fuck about now. But the only thing I want is for my family to look at me and say, that's the man mm -hmm. right there. And men don't fucking have that. They don't know what that feels like. So until you know what that feels like, you're never going to seek that feeling of when things are bad, my family looks to me. Mm -hmm. As they should. As they should. That's your job. That is my fucking job. Mm -hmm. And I earned that. It's not given because you wake up and you're a man. And it feels real good. It feels amazing. When anything goes wrong in my family, if there's a flat tire, they don't call fucking AAA. They call David fucking Goggins. Mom's got a problem? David. My mom's sick? David. She don't call the fucking doctors? David. Anybody, they call David, and that's earned, and that's a good feeling. And I would challenge men to try that. Try that. Try that for a couple of days. Try working those 20-hour shifts and coming home and having your girl have a meal at home. I guarantee your girl looks at you very different. Every day you come home and you're dirty as fuck. Mm -hmm. Or you or you're just tired and you and she knows you're only getting four hours of sleep and then when you go to work, she's sleeping mm -hmm. because it's 4 o'clock in the fucking morning and you look at her, she knows mm -hmm. what kind of man she's got. Mm -hmm. Your mom knows. Your dad knows what kind of son they have. Yeah. They don't know that feeling. It's the best feeling in the fucking world. It Money is. can't buy it. Nothing True. can buy it. So it's just something that we almost can't teach our kids anymore right. because the world is influencing people from all over. Once they leave your house, you got this weak family and that weak family and that weak family mm -hmm. saying, why is your dad like that? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. So it's hard to keep it, man. Tell you what, though. Once you try it, you it's, might become fucking addicted it's to it. It's addicted. And you don't want to give it up. That's right. It's very addictive. you're 100% right. 
You're my right. daughter down there looking at me, knowing that no matter what happens, it's right. she'll call nobody else. My dad got me. It's me. Yep. No matter where he is, what time it is, it's me. He's got the and answer. And I'm going to come out and figure it the fuck That's out. That's right. And you all better hope you're not fucking with her. Think about everybody it. everybody dies. Think about it. Mm-hmm. And how can you not want that? How can you not want that? That's old school savagery, bro. 100%. Old school savagery. Dude, I cannot. I love you. I mean, you are an old school savage. There ain't many left. Yes, sir. But I appreciate you being on here. I appreciate you jumping on Close and Conquer. I appreciate what you did today for those people. And you are changing lives. Your legacy. Thank you. There's going to be a lot of mother freaking people. I mean, like that guy downstairs. I changed my life. That dude could be dead. Right. Because of that weight. Right. And because of you. And no, nobody credit. He don't even know what day it is. He's walking around in the meeting. He don't even look at the agenda. Right. He talks about David Goggins <laughs> and you show up. So it's it's I appreciate what you're doing, man. And uh, we need more people in the world like you. So I appreciate y'all. Guys, this has been amazing. Um I'm, you probably already follow David Goggins if you don't live like under a rock somewhere. But David, I appreciate you jumping on Close and Conquer. If you like this, share, subscribe, send it to everybody you know. This was unfreaking believable. And there ain't, I'm not even gonna tell you that we're gonna put you another link or another video because just watch this podcast. There ain't not th I'm telling you this. If you will listen, if you will put the bullshit aside and just listen. And by the way, let it hurt. Let it hurt. Yep. There's nothing wrong with it hurting. No. Let it hurt. It's necessary. It's very necessary. necessary. You know, I decided to get sober because a dude pulled me aside at work named Mike. Mike Rooney. And he looked at me. And he was an old school dude. Mm -hmm. Been around the block. Grew up in tough area. I Those related to him ones. right away. Yep. And he said to me, uh, when are you going to stop drinking? Didn't even know I got high. Just knew I drank a lot. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know. He said, don't have any children. Because my, my ex-wife worked with me at the state, mm -hmm. social worker. Don't have any children with her wow. if you're not going to fucking get sober. Just like that. That's exactly what he said. And I was half pissed. And here's a guy I can smack the shit out oh, yeah. of. I was, oh, like I would have, I mean, but I respected him. Yep. And he had the balls yep. to tell me what I needed to hear. Yep. Had he not pulled me aside and had that conversation, I could have been a, dead in a car accident. Yep. In jail. But that's what shook me. I kept until she wanted to have kids. And I'm like. How do I bring kids? Like, when it was just me, I was fine. Yep. Sounds messed up, but it was just screwing up my life. I was like, I'm good. She was supportive. I'd be all fucked. But kids. Yep. Because he pour into me. That's what you do to people every day. You know what's sad? What that guy did to you, that's a lost art form now. Yeah. You almost can't do it now. You almost can't do it. You almost can't talk to people in that way. Like, hey, man, he changed your life, but mm -hmm. that was a tough Sure fucking was. conversation. You better dude. believe it was. Like those are fighting words, bro. You better believe it. Like I don't. Fuck and that you was up. my first thing I thought. Yeah. But I respected him. Yep. And I would have bitch slapped him, so it wouldn't have been much of a fight. But that's the hard thing. But it hurt. It hurt. And he was, was right. Real. Yep. He was real. Yeah. It was. He was real as fuck. And yeah. I've had a couple of those with myself. Mm -hmm. And they hurt. Yeah. Like when I had that accountability mirror, man. And I looked in there. I said, man. And I listed all the fucking things that I wasn't. And I said, God. This is a fucking long road, bro, <laughs> and it hurt. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I uh, it does. Yep. But but the crazy thing is that when you uh, when you let it hurt and you listen, and we can bring that back. I mean, I agree, it's lost art. But mm -hmm. what if more of us decide it's okay? Oh yeah. What if more of us decide like talk to me like that, bro? Yeah. Like I think there's more people. I did this uh, podcast, young kid, and I said, and it you know it did well and whatever else. And I said, dude, you're like 23. Mm -hmm. Why did it do so well? And he goes, because my generation, I know it gets a bad rap. Mm -hmm. He said, but dude, there's a lot of dudes that want old school coaching. Doesn't mean everybody does. Right. But once they start getting the taste of it, mm -hmm. because guess what? It starts to come out. Oh, yeah. That manhood starts to come out. Oh, yeah. That, that feels feeling good. feeling starts yep. to come out. And all of a sudden, I'm addicted to that feeling. Not to that, not to that, not exactly. to that. Exactly. Because it is freaking addicting. That's we'll right. tell you what, bro. You got it. I love and appreciate you, man. It was Respect. amazing. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Guys, I appreciate y'all. Have a great day. Thanks for jumping on Close and Conquer.